Bonjour. Bonjour. This is Bertrand and Mary from My Pride Paris. <laughs> we are a boutique agency in Paris. We're specialized in custom tours and tailored itineraries. Every week we're taking you to Paris online with us. And today we're doing our second episode of the second lockdown yes. uh, in Paris. So we are allowed uh, one hour out per day to breathe the air, walk a little bit. So we want to spend this hour with you guys sharing our favorite spots of Paris. Yes. And today we are in the second arrondissement. Yeah, the second district. It's not very known, the second district, because it's a tiny one. It's a small district, but with a big horse. <laughs> yeah, with a big horse there, of course. <laughs> uh, COVID time, we're going to put our, our masks yes. on. So, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's hard to put the mask with one hand. Here we go. And we yeah. start by the big horse. It's uh, actually King Louis XIV dressed as a Roman Caesar and celebrating his victories. Because, Marie, we are on the Place des Victoires, the yes. Plaza of the Victories. And this Place des Victoires is very original compared to other plaza in Paris because it's all round. I'm going to yeah. show you guys how it looks. So, Place des Victoires is located not very far from Palais Royal. Where Not we've far. been, uh, exactly. uh, so in the first episode, and so now we are in the second district, so Place des Victoires. So you can Google it uh, to show exactly where it is. We're just uh, three blocks away from the Louvre. So not far from the Louvre, not far from the Seine. So this way you get to the Pompidou Center, and, and it's and really and there, Opera. Yes. Yeah, and so Opera House, Louvre. Pompidou Center, and then if you go all the way up there, you will get to the hill of Montmartre. But that's okay. another, a whole other story. So yeah. now, let's talk about this big horse statue here. Because we don't have many horse statues in Paris. No. You might, you might find, think that with all the kings we had, we will have you know, all this type of statue, but in reality, we don't have that many. No, and actually many of these statues were uh, destroyed. Uh, were melted down if they were made of bronze they were melted down during the french revolutions to uh, make cannonballs bullets etc uh, but this one the, the the original basis of it is actually in the louvre uh, but this one is a pretty pretty important one and of that shows really what was the the french monarchy at its peak which is what we call the uh, monarchy of divine right or absolute monarchy with Louis XIV uh, up there, dressed as a Roman emperor, it's to show his will of creating a great empire and his domination uh, over Europe. And on the pedestal, you will find uh, scenes of actually the king is on a throne uh, somewhere here. Yes. And then you have lining up um, ambassadors oh. of the different countries that have been defeated. And so in that case, the countries that have been defeated were um, uh, Germany, Holland, and Spain. It's one of the major victories of Louis XIV, which brought money to build the Palace of Versailles. Ah, that's how it was. Yeah, because Versailles being so luxurious, it, have to need, yeah. you, need to know that. you need to steal money from other people to build something like I that. See, I so see, I see. So the king okay. was stealing money of the French with the taxes. Uh, but mostly with, uh, with war and war tribute. And so in this second arrondissement, we can still find this atmosphere, this peculiar atmosphere of the old Paris, of the Paris of the 16 and 1700s, uh, because it's untouched. And we have round the corner here, uh, a small church, which today is an important basilica. Uh, but it's a relatively uh, smaller church by the size, which uh, was built by the father of Louis XIV to ask for a son. Uh, that king was Louis XIII. He and his wife, um, for years and years and years, could not have babies. And they asked uh, to Mary, Virgin Mary of the Christian, to provide them with a son. And so the son is out there. And the church. So we're going to go and see the church, but first I want you guys to see something. 
So we're just in the street Rue Ville Gousset, so in between Place des Victoires and the church uh, that Bertrand just talked about. And Ville Gousset, in French, that means that we're going to empty uh, your pockets or we're going to, let's say, steal your wallet. And that's because this neighborhood was also a place for, well, this, um, maybe you heard about the Miracle Court or La Cour des Miracles. It was uh, not far from here by Bonne Nouvelle and Victor Hugo is talking about it in his book The Hunchback of Notre Dame. It's this whole pack, let's say, of people that are stealing things uh, and are uh, scamming, so all the croc, all the fraud that are in Paris, like faking, for example, having uh, a limp or being, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, blind to, uh, in fact, steal your money. And that's typically the street where something like that might happen because Ville Gousset is still the main uh, of the street. So probably from more from the Middle Ages or Renaissance, I don't know, uh, but it's not the case anymore. It's very bourgeois. Pickpockets. Yeah, you can say pickpockets. Yeah. And so Marie, since you are named uh, Mary. Marie also, <laughs> <laughs> we are in a very uh, important place yes. uh, for the name Marie. Yes, I can see my name all over the place. So there is this, for example, there is this boutique, there is the Coeur Immaculé de Marie, so probably a boutique for religious art and religious items that is just in front of the church. But this place, to me, it's not really Paris, it's more like a little village because it seems very tiny and having this chill atmosphere, you have a nice bakery here. So it's, it's very different from anything else. But should we have a peek inside? Yes. Sure. Okay, maybe we can uh, try to go. So I don't know much about the history of this church, um, just the fact that Lully is buried here. So the composer. Who was Lully? So very famous composer. Um, you probably, you, if you've been to Versailles, <laughs> you probably heard about Lully or at least hear his music. Um, so he is really famous uh, under Louis XIV. And, uh, and again, we are not far from the Louvre, so that makes sense that Lully is here. It's also the place where I think he was a student here. So yeah, so that makes sense. So I don't know if we're going to be able to see the church though. Let's try to get it inside the church. Do you know any other stuff about Lily you want to share? Because <laughs> I don't know much. It's a beautiful church, early 1600s. It looks very much like uh, a lot of churches in Rome. We have a lot of expert tools, so those plagues, you can see them here. And they are thinking Mary, obviously. Um, so all these little plagues, expert tools, they are all from different people, and they are thinking for something that happened in their life. They want to make a donation to the church, and that's the way you can do it. So you give some money and uh, you pay for one little Margot plate. In, in this church, you have many of those. And you can see May 2019. So it's still something that goes on. Do you want to see the lily? Yeah. The little? Okay. So it's just I'm trying to show how many ex votos there are. Well, wow, yeah, are thousands. Places. It's, it's really hard to imagine. It's covering the walls. I don't know that. It's even more, even um, where you used to have windows, the covering it with the marble plates. So you yeah. see it all over. The thing is, this church being dedicated to um, Mary of Victories, yeah. it's the w church to go to if you have a big, big request. And it became also a very important place of pilgrimage. Uh, for the lady you see here, who is known as Saint Teresa, Saint Teresa of Lisieux, who is a very important uh, French saint of the uh, 1800s. And so she has spent some time uh, here at this church. And so that has also uh, attracted a lot of uh, Christians to go to church more often, yeah. and especially to this church. 
okay. because it, it has had a big history uh, in the 1600s because it's here that the king uh, prayed Mary to have a son and that son became Louis XIV so it was quite a success uh, and because it was an important church important people living in the neighborhood would be buried here and that includes Jean-Baptiste Lully who was uh, born Italian but he became uh, a French subject to the king and it's interesting he's because he is he was the uh, business partner of another Jean-Baptiste uh, that Mary uh, you told us about last week Jean-Baptiste Molière Lully was the composer of the plays and of the parties of uh, King Louis XIV when Molière was uh, writing the, the, the lyrics the or the, or the yeah. words of the play. Okay. So it's odd because the, the tomb is uh, quite high, you know, usually yeah. uh, it, it's, it's rare to have it uh, uh, it's so high. It's above the door, which is yeah, very unusual. It's very unusual. The reason for that is that during the French Revolution, uh, the tomb was um, uh, destroyed and so a new tomb was put up there where it's much more difficult to grab anything. I see. But it's a beautiful, uh, yes, beautiful I think church. I we have to go on the other side. Oh, yeah. Yes. A beautiful church of this uh, Paris of the 1600s, uh, which is what you find a lot in the second arrondissement. My lady. Thank you. And we are back in this very charming little place. So this is, I would say this is a hidden gem of Paris. Uh, not a lot of people yeah. know about this place, not even the Parisians. We don't and really come very often in this little plaza here. And ne next time you come to Paris, we'll, uh, there are plenty of amazing treasures. There are paintings by a guy, a guy called Van Loo inside the church. And these paintings could very much be uh, at the Louvre. So it's really, uh, it's worth taking a few uh, minutes. So now we are leaving the Place des Petits Pères, huh? that's the real name of yep. the place here, and leading us to a gallery, because this is also the neighborhood that is known for hidden passages. Yes. So the les passages secrets, les, les galeries, huh? so that's, uh, that's one uh, way to say them. So Galerie Vivienne is one of them. It's actually my favorite. Yes. And so, yeah, we're about to go in. It's true that it's probably the, m the most preserved one. So already when you're entering the gallery, you can feel the atmosphere changes. <laughs> it's completely different. It's just so beautiful. So yeah, let's start with this beautiful floor. This was made by a mosaicist that, oh, that is from <laughs> Italy. I, I almost. <laughs> I missed the step. Um, <laughs> so the, mos <laughs> the mosaic, uh, it's Faccini, right? Mm -hmm. And he made that at the same time the Opera Garnier was made. Uh, so we are really at the last, last year of the 19th century, around 1870. And the passage are becoming quite a fashionable. Uh, everyone wants a, a passage because those are private passages for a long time. Now, I don't know, mm, do you know if there it's, is it's still, it's private. still private? It's still private owners? Okay. The, the owner of the Galerie uh, Vivienne is actually the Academy of Fine Arts. Ah, uh, I'm not surprised as it's uh, so detailed and lovely. So this is a little hotel, so I will show you. Uh, so the mosaic on the floor. And the detail. And it's been beautifully uh, restored in the last years. It was new. I mean, the, this style of covered passages was highly fashionable at the beginning of the 1800s when the streets of Paris were not all paved, so it was very muddy. Plus, there was a lot of uh, crime, so this was places of, uh, you know, where you would be uh, safe. But then as the city grew bigger and bigger with more stores and especially the big department stores, well then it started to be used less and less to the point that people wanted to get rid of it. Yes. 
so we're happy that uh, it did not happen. Them. I kind of want to go on that side just to see. Um, they made some Christmas decorations. So it's, uh, it's November when we are filming that. So it's a bit yeah, soon. Well, we need to... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we need to dream about Christmas. To dream about <laughs> next month. <laughs> <laughs> Look how amazing these places. Christmas lights and wine line. What oh. else? Of course, yeah. This is a, a nice liqueur wine store. Lucien Legrand. And on the other side, there is uh, also a nice bistro called Bistro Vivienne. I also heard that a famous, um, let's say, detective. Detective, yeah, I was thinking policeman, but yeah, used yeah, to live just, just, just right here. Vidoc. And number 13. The there is uh, a movie about Vidoc that just. Yeah, uh, movie, TV series. He, he was a bad guy who founded the modern police uh, of Paris. And because he was a bad guy, he knew the uh, the the techniques. Yeah, how to <laughs> how to disguise, how to Ex yeah, how to, to just do do <laughs> things uh, undercover. Guy, yeah, he, he knew the vocabulary. Uh, he knew the the guys, uh, which you know who who is who, and eventually he became a very 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 important policeman uh, of the 1800s. So it's it's cool that. He is uh, still associated with this uh, gallery, um, which really is this uh, old Paris feeling. I'm really amazed by the boutiques uh, here. It's something different. It has this kind of old-fashioned style with the uh, wood and all the decoration, but at the same time, you feel like it's it's not really um, yeah, related to any era, any epoch in particular. Like it, it could be, it just mere outside of the present, not really in the past, you know, just outside of the time. Yeah. Like for example, this library here, well, it's Libre, sorry in French, so I'm always bookstore. Uh, this bookstore uh, is one of the oldest bookstore in Paris. Some people say it's the oldest of Paris. And you see the date, uh, 1826. So, yeah, so it feels like the time freeze here. Like it just stopped. And yeah, some of the books here are probably from the same time uh, as the probably. bookstore or itself, even, yeah. or even older. Or even older. So I'm just going to. Older leather covers. So yeah. today, obviously, there are very few uh, people. But even on a regular uh, basis, it's not the place that will be the most uh, crowded. Maybe because most of the boutiques now are very chic. Yes, very chic. And it's a little bit intimidating sometimes. Uh, but to be honest, it doesn't necessarily cost you an arm and a leg uh, to come here for, you know, on the, on the right, you have your glasses made. There's a very cool uh, and good Italian restaurant at the entrance. Yeah, I, I, I remember also Jean-Paul Gaultier, the uh, French designer, used to have his uh, office here. So it's definitely one of the most beautiful places. I, I do want to make a picture. So like you mentioned it, uh, those passages are here to protect, especially women, when they want to make their shopping at the time, protect us from the rain, from the sun, from the robbery that we just talked about, the le, le pickpocket, the vide gousset. So of course, those are very safe uh, type of passages. And it's great because from Palais Royal, so almost from the Louvre, uh, with the arcades with Rivoli, plus the passages, you can go all the way up to Montmartre, or almost, uh, to uh, the bottom of the hill of Montmartre. From one to another. For, to yeah. one, yeah, exactly. You just follow the passages, and that's how it. That's why they all concentrate also in this in neighborhood. This yes, exactly. In the second district, and uh, that's yeah probably why this uh, arrondissement is so known. Oh, what happened? I'm oh just, yeah. I just want to show a little bit where people do live here. So right yeah, the there staircase. you have your digi code, and then you take the stairs. To go up. And that's the Italian restaurant you were talking about. Here? Exactly. That's the one, right? Exactly. Okay, let's have a look. So at the moment all restaurants are closed, 
but if you guys see all these brown paper bags, they do a uh, delivery or a takeaway. So are we are in lockdown, yes. uh, but still businesses uh, can go. But it's, it's a very beautiful... Uh, I never tried it. I, I, I need it's, to. It's really good. It's really good. I know probably you guys don't really think of uh, Italian food when you go to Paris. I'm sure they do. <laughs> I'm sure they do. <laughs> Everyone is talking about <laughs> Italian food and, and, you know, craving to have some. But it's actually great. <laughs> so this street is outside of the passage, but that will lead us to La Bourse, which is another monument that is important in the second district. And on the way, uh, like I say, many designers are here. So we're talking about Jean-Paul Gaultier. There is also Chloe. So I don't know if you know Chloe. Huh? So they, it's actually my perfume with Chloe. Okay. <laughs> Very French. Um, yeah, so, 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 it's, so it's still a place for fashion. It's still linked uh, with fashion, especially fashion design. And we're not very far from another neighborhood that is called Sentier. And Sentier is where they are uh, importing and trading the fabrics. So that could also uh, explain why in this neighborhood we have so much designers, also so much French designers. So maybe after the bourse we can have a quick look at Sentier, but probably during the COVID time we're not going to see uh, the, the, the fabric, but it's, it's quite impressive uh, to see the long tube uh, covering the fabric. Um, now there is another place in Paris where you can buy fabric to make things yourself. It's mostly in Montmartre. So if you are interested in, uh, <laughs> in that type of thing. Um, making your own clothes. Yeah, making your own clothes or curtain or redecorating yourself your house. That will be more in Montmartre now. I just, I just want to pause a second because we're passing by a truck that uh, offers solution and services for uh, delivery. And <laughs> this is how they advertise for it. They say <laughs> we're flexible and, and creative. creative. Like a ballerina. Like a ballerina, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I mean, you know, it's, you're selling uh, trucks, you're selling delivery, and you know, you advertise with a, a ballerina dancing. That's pretty cool. <laughs> so yeah, so we're gonna go all the way there. It's also, um, but because we're gonna arrive to the bus, it's also the place where a lot of, um, collection can be made i'm thinking about oh we are passing in front of kenzo so if you like this uh, this designer that's pretty cool too love those old doors yeah i don't in normal time i would have pushed <laughs> that door but <laughs> so yeah so if you're for example if you're doing a collection of scents or um coins or things like that uh, i'm thinking about another um, collection that is typical French, you know, the top of the champagne cork. Ah, yes, so yes. So you have the cork and you have always a little this capsule just on the top. Yeah, and almost uh, like a medal. Like a medal, and, and that's uh, apparently. Say, I, I did thing. that one. I did, <laughs> I drank, yeah, I drank it. Uh, and this is a typical uh, collection we can find around here. You can buy those things. Especially for champagne that is, uh, well, I don't know, outdated <laughs> now that you cannot drink anymore, but costs. Uh, cost a fortune and so yeah so they all around here around La Bourse because of course for a long time this is where we were trading uh, a coin uh, a coin from one country changing into another when you say La Bourse Marie La Bourse yes you mean this building is called La Bourse and it's interesting because it's not at all uh, right now in the modern time in 2020 it's not related to money anymore, but it used to be where we were changing uh, to the money. So this building was made under Napoleon I. Exactly. You can recognize any buildings made by Napoleon. Um, look for the columns. Uh, that's, a, <laughs> that's a good Massive start. Columns to show Massive power. columns. And something you put square also, or triangles. So triangle, square, and columns. That's, that's Napoleon's touch. Now, what is this place? So this place is for private events. You also have a restaurant that is quite known, the Spoon one. It's a famous chef, French chef, that is operating in this restaurant. So yeah, so this big, beautiful building, right in the Paris, not used anymore, because of course, for a stock exchange, we need more space. 
And it's all happening and in more, La Défense, no? more computers, yeah. More computers, definitely. Yeah, at the time it was easy to make things here, but yeah. You don't need to be in the same room anymore to trade. So uh, there is a, a building in the heart of the financial district, where the, uh, which is called the stock exchange market. Mm -hmm. But most people uh, trade, I mean, from their offices, from their homes. Yeah. You don't need to be exchanging physical papers anymore. It's all uh, digital. So that's why they, they turn the, uh, this uh, old stock exchange market mm -hmm. into a center for um, exhibition events. OK. And so this street is Rue Vivienne. Maybe um, we can just go over there so I can show you the collection I was telling you about. Yeah, so on this part of the street, that's where the collectioners, uh, the one that are collecting coins, the, the champagne cork and all of that. So you see Asha Lingo. And so they are buying coins and uh, gold. But just, just because we're passing here, I'm going to stop. You know how I love food. So this is one of my favorite chocolate shops. Because the Bob and Galet are the chocolate, uh, the chocolatier, the favorite ones of Marie Antoinette, the Queen oh, Marie Antoinette, and Napoleon the First. So they were making chocolate for the Queen, apparently because she didn't like her medication, her drug, uh, so much the taste uh, of some powder she was taking to for her health. Uh -huh. So they just mixed. Uh, the drug with cacao, the cacao powder, and made pistol, so that's a, one kind of chocolate that is very flat and round. So we don't see them here, but you can point. see you can see other ones. And you can see, for example, the fleur de lis. And apparently, I don't know if you spot the one that is fleur de lis uh, in the box, uh, just in the bottom of the box. This is apparently the favorite of Napoleon. Really? Yes, that's what they say here. Eating the king pie, the eating, king symbol. Eating the fleur de lis. You see, it's also uh, the, the emblem of the Beauvengalais. So Maison Fondale. So that's probably the first chocolate maker in Paris made his way through. Um, but I know chocolate is came first in Bayonne, no? In exactly. the Pays Basque. I'm so happy you mentioned it, Marie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so now coins are very valuable from antiquity, Roman time, yeah, and these, all modern. Actually, guys, uh, these are coins from the Roman times. Wow. Yeah, from the Gaul, uh, le, les you Gaulois. Would, you would think it's, it is in museums, but actually uh, you can buy some here. Uh, and we have one of our guides who is actually a great collector Florent? of all, the, all these things. Yes, Florent. So if you want to know uh, how Florent is, uh, is involved also with uh, World War II, uh, he's, he's a big fan of history and, and mm -hmm. war. And yeah. so, yeah, so Florent, it, they, you made a video with Florent in, uh, in Normandy. And here you have Euro coins coming from uh, all, uh, all over the Eurozone. Alors, if, you, if you're not familiar with Euros, which is you know, normal if you're not European, you have to know that um, it's uh, something we do, it's all the all the um, coins are have different faces, let's say. Yeah. But the one where you see the number is always the same. So I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah. So for example, if it's yeah, one euro are per country, whether you are uh, from France or from uh, Spain, from Italy, the heads would be uh, different, and this is how you can find out where your uh, euro coin is coming from. But the banknotes are all the same. Now, if you have gold, you see they are buying your gold and your silver here. That's the price of the gold today. So one kilo, wow, that's 52,000. Okay. That was <laughs> yesterday. Some gold. Today it's 52,470, so it's going up. Even better. Buy gold. Okay, I don't, have, gold. I don't have a kilo of gold <laughs> on me, but if I do, I will come back here. That is so, I don't know, it's, it's so old-fashioned, you know, to be yeah. able to, to buy gold and sell gold. But maybe, yeah, maybe just because I don't have any. <laughs> yeah. So, Rue Vivienne, if you're looking for this street where we are. And now we are going to see another passage, because we told you, well, we can, I don't know, 
in here we have these little moments where we're not covered but very soon yeah the passage des panoramas uh, is making the link with the other ones on rue Saint-Marc now and getting to passage des panoramas which is probably the most iconic after Galerie Vivienne most iconic passage so passage des panoramas here we come So are you coming here often, Bertrand? Or is, this, passages? Or if it, 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 is it just like uh, the Tuileries or the Louvre, something quite touristic? What do you think? I used to come here much more often when um, I was working in the area. But to be honest, I always love coming back here because it's this very peculiar atmosphere. You don't find it anywhere else. And I don't know, it feels feels familiar coming back here too, some nice coffee on the side. Yeah. Yeah, so this gallery is a bit different from Galerie Vivienne. Uh, it's not really about designers or accessories. It's mostly about food. And so you just have the cafe here. You have another one. Used to be, you see, Stern Graveur. So on the left here, you have also his name here, or the big name here. So Stern, it used to be a boutique where they were doing engraving. It changed into a restaurant, and most of the boutiques here used to be for, um, or yeah, so or uh, engraving or also making gloves. Um, you had a lot of artisans working also the furniture, making chairs. So the passages were associated with fine, delicate uh, objects, items that you could uh, collect. Then it became a place with, like I said, the stamp, oh, you have them just right here. So a place for the collection. So in French, we say numismatic. I don't know if uh, there is a <laughs> the same thing in, in, in English, if it's exactly the same translation. So yeah, stamps from all over the world. We are in the part of Paris where we love to travel, where we love to share. And uh, that's also where we're going to find uh, the first uh, cafes also where you can uh, try uh, cacao, uh, so the, the, the chocolate, we talk about the hot chocolate, but also coffee. Um, that's uh, kind of uh, the new thing. So you have like that a lot of uh, places. Here, all postcards. If you want to find postcards, you have also the les puces, uh, the flea markets market, in yeah. Paris. But here will be a tiny flea market. And also we are not far from Drouot. And Rouen, it's the place, it's uh, also an auction place in Paris where people are coming with the furniture and of course you buy it, like Christie's, is that, yeah, that's the name? Mm -hmm. um, Christie's in London. Christie's, so, Sandy. Yeah, so, so in, in Paris we call that Rouen and it's just, uh, just at the end of this passage and that also makes sense that all the neighborhood around is about, in, it's about yeah, vintage postcards, vintage posters and so on. Ah. There's even little images of Napoleon. <laughs> of course, he's always there. Wow, a stamp can be 400 euros. That's Next year, we're going to celebrate the 200th anniversary of his death. So maybe, ah. maybe shops are starting to gather Napoleon items. Ooh, the champagne. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what we were talking about. Those little uh, cap, cap of uh, champagne bottle. So now we're going to exit the passage here and we're going to go and explore just another little street that I want you to see in the, in the second, uh, second arrondissement. In between, yeah, you can see how the cafe used to be. That I'm, I was telling you about the cacao, the coffee and all that. This is a good, uh, good illustration. Huh? They were showing that here you had vanilla, you had uh, cinnamon, so all the spices. Uh, the cafes and the, the cafes. So all those spices are coming from all over the world. So it's a place to experiment uh, those new uh, tastes. Yeah, the sucre also, so the sugar from cane. And now it's mixed with, of course, the gluten-free bakeries or empanadas. So things that are completely, <laughs> yeah. From all over the world, let's say. Yeah, that's the interesting thing with these yeah. passages is that there's a feeling of nostalgia, and you know you are in the past in the Paris of the 1800s, and 
were not living in the 1800s, and so it's cool to keep the decor, but to change the, the shops and yeah. have things that are more uh, to our tastes. And at the time, also, Passage des Panoramas was very close to all the shows, all the theater, especially to uh, Le Théâtre des Boulevards, donc something that is more comedies, uh, nothing too dramatic like the opera, something more low, not yeah. low class, but let's say like bourgeois, so not aristocratic, just under. And this place, Passage des Panoramas, the name is coming from the fact that you had also a, a big fresco, so you have to so imagine that people were coming here to see a very long uh, painting. Um, that was also one of the fun things to see in Paris. So you have here Passage des Panoramas, not very far, you have also the Wax Museum that is called Musée Grévin. So that's exactly like Madame Tussaud. Uh, so the idea is to represent French people very important French people, such as presidents, yeah. yeah, celebrities, and uh, and the passages are coming. So we, we could continue and, <laughs> and so on, but this is another arrondissement already. We could cross and get to yeah the Passage Geoffroy. Mm -hmm. But you're right, that would be uh, going into uh, because yeah, this street. avenue is the really the frontier between the second and the ninth. So should we go to the street I like? Yeah. Okay. So we are just arriving to the street that I wanted you you to see, but before that. There is one shop that is open uh, with all the fabric, like you see. So this is Le Sentier. Uh, so this is how we call it, Sentier. This is this neighborhood. And so yeah, Rue des Petits Carreaux. So you have to know that for a long time, Les Halles, which is the, the biggest food market of Paris, was at the end of the street over there. So all here, it was already a street. So this one is Rue des Petits Carreaux. You have Rue Poissonnière. It's where all the fishermen were coming uh, from Normandy, from all the sea. They were coming in Paris through here. And already in the streets, they were tr starting to sell things on the floor. And that's why Les Petits Carreaux, because they used to have uh, those uh, uh, little square made of uh, ceramic uh, where they were uh, selling and cutting the fish. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So that's why uh, Poissonnière, Petit Carreaux, and then going to Léal. But what I like also about this little corner, this vegetal wall here, there are very few of those in Paris, and I just love this one. So that started only a few years ago, and now it's uh, growing like crazy. It's in the almost trees. It's magnificent. It truly is a vertical garden. And so here, Rue d'Aboukir, we have also Rue du Nil. So all those streets are also evoking uh, traveling, uh, Egypt. And uh, so this is all what I told you about the, the miracle court. Uh, the yes. people, uh, they are stealing uh, your thing. This the was here. <laughs> this was here. Um, the, um, the throne, let's say, and the, uh, uh, and the, yeah, the main place of all the robberies and all that. that was it. And that's why. There is a place called Bonne Nouvelle, because apparently... The whole and, boulevard, yeah. Yeah, under Louis XIV, uh, they decided to disassemble uh, the, oh, from here, the Miracle Court. And to do so, a lot of policemen came here in, uh, in the center of the court. And they said to the people there, they say, okay, so now, I'll let, I'll let you a few minutes to just go away. go away and never come back. And the three people that are left from that, so the three people staying here, we will hang them. The last three standing. The last three standing, we will hang them. So of course, they all, they all left, they all Everybody run, run away. All over. And the people in Paris, when they hear this news that finally the Miracle Court was uh, is that more, they say, oh, it's a good news, so it's a bon nouvelle, bon nouvelle, bon nouvelle. They were cheering uh, up because that was, uh, for so many years, a big problem in Paris. So now we don't have that. Um, yeah, we don't have Miracle Court anymore. Uh, but the streets uh, are still having this uh, very special atmosphere from uh, when Victor Hugo is describing them. And we are entering now Rue des uh, Petits Carreaux, but actually, no, it's, it's transforming itself into Rue Montorgueil. And Rue Montorgueil will go to 
leal to the farmers, uh, to, the, to the market of Paris. The Montargay is the yummy street, right? It's the yummy street. Yeah, we did the, uh, the video, the belly of Paris uh, about this street. So we can just go a little bit further and see the atmosphere today. Even during the lockdown, you will see it's very lively because it's, uh, it's like a market. It's every day like a market. And food stores are still open yes. because obviously we need to eat, right? Yeah, even during the lockdown, a lot of people are taking away. We love to eat, that's for sure. <laughs> that's never changed. And for example, here you have Bresse Café. That is uh, one of the favorite crêperies uh, when, you're, uh, when you like crêpes, when you like galettes. I do, I do. So, so you can, even for restaurants here, yeah, you can take away. Take so away? You can you can take uh, away crepe. You need to live in the neighborhood, right? To yes, or work in the neighborhood. Or because work in because the you can now you can uh, even during the lockdown you can still go to the office. So yes, so you had the crepe, the cheese shop of course. We have a lot of cheese shop, but this is one of the good good ones of Paris. I think we might stop here to buy some cheese, Bertrand. I think we, we've earned it. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, let's do that. Okay, so now I have my cheese. This is heaven in yes. a box. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Mondor. And Mondor is a cheese that uh, goes directly into the oven where you can take a little piece of bread, for example, and or just a spoon and dig uh, inside the wooden box to get the melted cheese is amazing. It is fantastic. You, you guys, you have to know that we are waiting all year long for the Mont d'Or to come back. It's like a seasonal cheese, uh, yeah. so that plus the November raclette. November to January, something like that. So now we are in London, trust me, this, this is great, <laughs> the greatest thing I this can is, get. This is the way to cheer up. <laughs> to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> and to spend some time indoors. And now we are arriving in a passage, uh, le passage du Grand Serre. So it's uh, another uh, passage, another one in the second district. This one is much quieter. It's all made of wood and they have beautiful, uh, I don't know how do you say that, balançoire in English, do you? Swings. Hanging swings. Ah, yeah, swings. So colorful swings hanging there. And yeah, and I think that's the perfect location uh, to end our tour because it's uh, not a passage and we're going to continue exploring uh, the just for ourselves but next week uh, I'm going to just get that away next week we're going to see you again uh, in the third that's where I live so I'm going to be very happy to share my neighborhood with you guys and uh, yeah and then we're going to continue like that exactly. for 20 districts so yeah we are excited thank you so much thank you very much thank you for supporting us you can Tip us, you can share this video, you can just talk about that uh, with your friends and your family. That would be a, a great help. And follow us on Instagram and Facebook, of course. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.